Hey there, I'm Brittany, and I've got a hell of a story to tell you. I'm 33, and up until recently, I was working as a cosmetologist at this fancy clinic downtown. It wasn't a bad gig, you know? Decent pay, nice clients, and I got to make people feel good about themselves. But I always had this itch, this dream of running my own show. Now, let me introduce you to the other main character in this clusterfuck of a story, my husband. Well, ex-husband now, but we'll get to that juicy bit later. Let's call him Jack. Jack's five years older than me and used to work as a manager at some big shot construction company. We'd been married for three years and were living in my apartment. Babe, I'm telling you, opening your own place is the way to go, Jack would say, lounging on the couch with a beer in hand. You be the boss, set your own hours. It's the dream, right? I'd nod, excitement bubbling up inside me. Yeah, you're right. But it's gonna take a lot of work and money to get there. Jack would wave his hand dismissively. Don't worry about that. We'll figure it out. I'll support us while you get it off the ground. You focus on being a kick-ass business owner. So, I started saving. Every extra penny went into my business fund. No more fancy dinners, no new clothes, nothing. I was on a mission. Geez, Brit, you don't have to be so strict, Jack would complain when I'd refuse to order takeout for the third time in a week. Every dollar counts, Jack, I'd reply, heating up some leftovers. We agreed on this, remember? He'd grumble but eventually nod. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It'll be worth it in the end. Now, I should probably mention that Jack had been married before. He told me he'd left his apartment to his ex-wife after their divorce. They'd been together for five years, and that was about all I knew. Whenever I tried to bring it up, he'd get all cagey. Months went by, and finally, I felt ready to take the plunge. I quit my job at the clinic, got my license, found the perfect little space, and started renovating. Every day was a whirlwind of decisions, what equipment to buy, how to decorate. Finally, after what felt like forever, I was ready to open. I worked my ass off, seven days a week, from dawn till way past dusk. I barely saw Jack during those first few weeks. When I'd get home, he'd be asleep. When I left in the morning, he was still snoring away. One day, I was in the middle of a facial when my phone started buzzing like crazy. I ignored it at first, I'm a professional, after all. But when it wouldn't stop, I started to worry. What if something had happened to Jack? As soon as my client left, I checked my phone. Five missed calls from my mother-in-law, Sandra. My stomach dropped. Sandra never called unless it was important. I called her back, my heart pounding. Sandra, is everything okay? Brittany, thank goodness, she said, her voice shaky. I've been trying to reach Jack all day. There's some kind of scandal at his work, and I can't get through to him. I'm worried sick. I felt like I'd been doused in cold water. Scandal? What scandal? I don't know anything about a scandal, Sandra. Jack hasn't mentioned anything to me. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Oh, Sandra finally said. I see. Well, if you hear from him, please ask him to call me. That night, I waited up for Jack. He stumbled in around midnight, reeking of beer. Where have you been? I asked, trying to keep my voice level. Your mom's been trying to reach you all day. Something about a scandal at work? Jack froze, then let out a long sigh. He slumped onto the couch, not meeting my eyes. I guess I should have told you sooner. I quit my job, about a month ago. I felt like the wind had been knocked out of me. A month? You've been unemployed for a month and you didn't think to mention it? What happened? I got into a fight with my boss, he said, his voice bitter. He was being a complete asshole, and I just... I couldn't take it anymore. My pride wouldn't let me stay. I took a deep breath, trying to process this bombshell. Here I was, working myself to the bone, and Jack had been sitting at home this whole time? 
Why didn't you look for another job? I asked. Jack looked at me then, his eyes pleading. I think I'm burned out, Brit. I need a break. Maybe see a psychologist or something. I just can't face jumping into another job right now. Part of me wanted to scream at him. We had a plan, damn it. He was supposed to support us while I got the business off the ground. But looking at him sitting there, defeated and small, I couldn't bring myself to lay into him. Okay, I said finally. We'll figure this out. But no more secrets, Jack. We're supposed to be a team. He nodded, relief washing over his face. I'm sorry, Brit. I promise, no more secrets. Little did I know, that was just the first of many promises he'd break. The next few weeks were tough. I started picking up extra shifts at my old clinic, working mornings at my office and afternoons at the clinic. It was exhausting, but what choice did I have? We had bills to pay, and I had a loan to repay for the office. Jack spent most of his time at home, supposedly looking for jobs online but mostly playing video games. I tried to be supportive, reminding myself that mental health was important. But as the weeks turned into months, I started to wonder if he was really trying at all. Then, finally, a glimmer of hope. Jack came home one day, grinning from ear to ear. I got a job, he announced. I was so relieved I could have cried. We celebrated that night with a bottle of wine, toasting to new beginnings. For a moment, it felt like everything was going to be okay. Jack's new job lasted all of a month. One day, I came home from a particularly grueling shift to find him sprawled on the couch, beer in hand, staring blankly at the TV. You're home early, I said, a sinking feeling in my stomach. He shrugged, not taking his eyes off the screen. Quit. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. What? Why? Boss was a moron, Jack muttered. Wanted me to be some kind of robot. All about discipline and following orders. Screw that noise. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my cool. Jack, we talked about this. We can't afford for you to keep quitting jobs. He finally looked at me, his eyes hard. What, so I'm supposed to be miserable? I thought you'd be more understanding, Brit. I bit my tongue, not wanting to start a fight. But inside, I was seething. Understanding? I was working myself to the bone while he sat around drinking beer and playing video games. The next six months were a blur of work, stress, and mounting frustration. I'd come home to find Jack exactly where I'd left him, surrounded by empty beer cans and takeout containers. Any luck with the job search? I'd ask, trying to keep the desperation out of my voice. Nothing good out there, he'd reply, waving his hand dismissively. I'm looking for something interesting, you know? With good pay but not too demanding. I wanted to scream. Who didn't want a job like that? But those jobs didn't just fall into your lap. You had to work for them. One night, after a particularly long day, I came home to find Jack actually up and about. He had this weird, excited look in his eyes. Brit, I've been thinking, he said, pulling me down onto the couch next to him. We should have a baby. I stared at him, sure I'd misheard. What? Yeah, think about it, he said, grinning. I could be a stay-at-home dad. You'd go to work, I'd take care of the kid. It's perfect. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Jack, you've never even washed a dish in this apartment. How are you going to take care of a baby? His face fell. What, you don't think I could do it? It's not that, I said, trying to be diplomatic. It's just, taking care of a baby is a lot of work and we're not exactly in a great financial position right now. You're being cruel, he said, his voice low. You don't understand my problems. I laughed, a short, harsh sound. Your problems? Jack, I'm working seven days a week. I'm exhausted. And you want to add a baby to this mess? He stormed off, slamming the bedroom door behind him. 
I sat on the couch, my head in my hands, wondering how we'd gotten to this point. It started with the computer games. At first, I didn't think much of it. Everyone needs a hobby, right? But then I noticed our joint account was hemorrhaging money. Jack, I said one evening, my voice tight with frustration, did you buy another game? And, did you upgrade your computer? He didn't even look up from the screen. Yeah, so what? It's our money, isn't it? I took a deep breath, trying to stay calm. We're supposed to be saving, remember? For our future? He paused the game and turned to me, his face a mask of innocence. Babe, it's an investment. In my leisure time, you know? Don't worry, I'll pay it all back when I get a job. That was the last straw. The next day, I closed our joint account and stopped giving Jack money altogether. If he wanted to act like a child, fine. But I wasn't going to be his personal ATM anymore. I thought that would be the end of it. Boy, was I wrong. The fight started almost immediately. Jack would stomp around the apartment, slamming doors and muttering under his breath. You don't respect me, he'd yell. You're trying to control me. I tried to reason with him. Jack, I'm just trying to keep us afloat. We can't keep spending money we don't have. He stormed off, leaving me standing in the kitchen, wondering how we'd gotten to this point. Days went by, and Jack didn't lift a finger around the apartment. Dishes piled up in the sink, laundry overflowed the hamper, and takeout containers littered every surface. I was working myself to the bone, and he couldn't even be bothered to run a vacuum. Then came the day that changed everything. I came home early from work, a migraine pounding behind my eyes. As I approached our apartment door, I heard Jack's voice drifting through the open window. Yeah, mom, I need a new suit for this great new job, he was saying. Could you spot me some cash? I'll pay you back as soon as I get my first paycheck. I froze, my hand on the doorknob. New job? What new job? I burst into the apartment, startling Jack so badly he dropped his phone. What new job, Jack? I demanded. He stammered, trying to come up with a lie on the spot. But I'd caught him red-handed. You were going to take money from your parents? For a job that doesn't exist? I was shaking with anger. I, I was going to tell you, he mumbled. Tell me what? That you're a liar? That you'd rather scam your own parents than get off your ass and find a real job? The fight that followed was epic. We screamed, we cried, we said things we couldn't take back. In the end, Jack grabbed a bag and stormed out, saying he was going to stay with his parents for a while. As the door slammed behind him, I sank to the floor, my head in my hands. I was successful, I was driven, I had my own business. And yet here I was, married to a man who seemed determined to drag us both down. The days after Jack stormed out were, weird. I kept expecting him to come crawling back, full of apologies and promises to do better. But as one day turned into two, then three, then a week, there was nothing. No calls, no texts, not even a lousy email. Part of me was relieved. The apartment was peaceful for once. No more walking on eggshells, no more cleaning up after a grown man who acted like a teenager. But another part of me was worried. What if something had happened to him? Just when I was starting to consider calling his parents, my phone rang. Jack's name flashed on the screen. I answered, my heart pounding. Jack? Where are you? Are you okay? His voice came through, loud and cheerful. Hey babe, guess where I am? Las Vegas. Can you believe it? Mom always wanted to come here, so we decided to make it a family trip. It's amazing! I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. Las Vegas? While I was here worrying about him? What do you mean, we decided? I asked, my voice tight. When did you decide this? Oh, you know, it was kind of spur of the moment, he said, his voice nonchalant. I told mom and dad about my great new job offer, and we thought, why not celebrate? I gripped the phone so hard my knuckles turned white. 
What job offer, Jack? We both know there isn't one. There was a pause, then Jack's voice came back, lower this time. Look, what they don't know won't hurt them, right? We're having a great time. I'll find a job when we get back, I promise. And how exactly are you paying for all this? I asked, dreading the answer. Oh, don't worry about that, he said, his voice bright again. I, uh, borrowed a couple of your credit cards. But don't freak out. I'll bring you back a magnet or something, okay? Have a great weekend. And then he hung up, just like that. I stood there, staring at my phone, feeling like my whole world was crumbling around me. This man, this person I had married, had stolen my credit cards to fund a vacation based on a lie. Something inside me snapped. I was done. No more second chances, no more excuses. With shaking hands, I opened my banking app and blocked every single one of my cards. Then I called a locksmith. I need my locks changed, I said. Today. As soon as possible. The locksmith came and went, and I was left alone in an apartment that suddenly felt too big, too empty. But I wasn't done yet. I grabbed my phone and made one more call. To a divorce lawyer. Sitting in the lawyer's office later that day, I felt a strange mix of emotions. Sadness, anger, fear, but also relief. As I signed the divorce papers, I realized this was the first step towards taking back control of my life. I was just settling in for a quiet evening at home, the first in what felt like forever, when my phone started buzzing. Jack's name flashed on the screen. I took a deep breath and answered. Brit, thank God you picked up. Jack's voice was frantic. Something's wrong with the cards. They're not working. We can't pay for anything. I could hear the panic in his voice, but I felt oddly calm. That's because I blocked them, Jack. There was a moment of stunned silence on the other end. Then, you what? Why would you do that? Because they're my cards, Jack. I didn't give you permission to use them. But, but we're stranded here. Mom and dad are freaking out. You have to unblock them. I could hear the desperation in his voice, but I stood my ground. No, I don't have to do anything. You got yourself into this mess, you can get yourself out. That's when he lost it. Are you kidding me? You're putting me in an impossible situation here. You're my wife, you're supposed to help me. Unblock the cards right now, or I swear to God, I'll divorce you. I burst out laughing then, a full belly laugh that felt like it was coming from someplace deep inside me that had been locked away for too long. Oh, Jack, I said, once I could speak again. You're a little late for that threat. And I hung up. The next day, I rented a storage unit and packed up all of Jack's things. Every shirt, every game console, every little knick-knack that reminded me of him, it all went into boxes and then into storage. I knew Jack would be coming home soon, probably expecting to waltz right back into our apartment like nothing had happened. Well, he was in for a surprise. Sure enough, a few days later, my phone rang again. Jack's voice was a mix of confusion and anger. Brit, what the hell? I can't get into the apartment. Did you change the locks? Yes, I did, I said calmly. Your things are in a storage unit. I'll text you the address and unit number. My things? What are you talking about? Let me in, Brit. This isn't funny. I took a deep breath. This was it. I'm not joking, Jack. I've filed for divorce. The papers should be arriving at your parents' house any day now. There was a long silence. Then, divorce? Brit, come on. You can't be serious. We can work this out. Let's start over, okay? I'll do better, I promise. It's over, Jack, I said firmly. I've made my decision. Please don't contact me again except through my lawyer. I hung up and blocked his number. As I sat there in my quiet apartment, I felt a strange mix of emotions. Sadness for what could have been. 
anger at all the lies and betrayal. But mostly, I felt relief. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I could breathe. A few days after I'd blocked Jack's number, my phone rang with an unfamiliar number. I almost didn't answer, thinking it might be Jack trying to reach me from another phone. But something made me pick up. Hello? I said cautiously. Brittany? It's Sandra, Jack's mother. My stomach clenched. Here it comes, I thought. The angry tirade about ruining their family vacation, about being a terrible wife, about not standing by my man. Sandra, I said, trying to keep my voice neutral. I'm sorry about what happened in Las Vegas. I. But she cut me off. No, Brittany. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I'm so disappointed in Jack. I thought he had changed. What do you mean? I asked, my curiosity piqued. There was a long sigh on the other end of the line. Brittany, there's something you should know. Jack's first marriage, it didn't end because they grew apart, like he told you. His ex-wife left him because of his irresponsibility. His lying, his inability to hold down a job, his, his stealing. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. He, he never told me. I know, Sandra said softly. We thought, we hoped that living with you, seeing how hardworking and responsible you are, it would inspire him to change. To grow up. Her voice trailed off, and I could hear the pain in it. I felt a surge of sympathy for her. She'd been duped just as much as I had. Sandra, I'm so sorry, I said. I had no idea. No, Brittany, I'm sorry, she said firmly. I'm sorry we didn't tell you the whole truth from the beginning. I'm sorry we let you go through this. And I'm more sorry than I can say for what Jack has done to you. I felt tears welling up in my eyes. Thank you, I whispered. I want you to know, Sandra continued, that when we found out the truth, how he'd been lying to you for months, how he stole your credit cards, how he'd been deceiving us about having a job, we kicked him out. He's not welcome in our home right now. I was speechless. I'd been so worried about facing judgment from Jack's family, and here they were, standing by me instead. I don't blame you for divorcing him, Brittany, Sandra said. You deserve so much better. I just. I hope you don't think badly of all of us because of Jack's actions. No, of course not, I said quickly. Sandra, I never blamed you or your husband. You've always been kind to me. We talked for a while longer, Sandra filling me in on some of the details I'd missed. By the time we hung up, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I wasn't alone in this. I wasn't crazy for feeling betrayed and angry. In the weeks following my conversation with Sandra, life started to settle into a new rhythm. I threw myself into my work, finding solace in the familiar routines of my cosmetology office. Without Jack's constant drama and financial drain, I found myself with more energy, more focus, and, surprisingly, more money. But Jack wasn't going to let go without a fight. One evening, as I was locking up the office, I spotted a familiar figure leaning against my car. My heart sank. Brit, Jack called out as I approached. Can we talk, please? I've changed, I swear. I'm looking for a job, a real one this time. I'll pay you back every cent. Just, just give me another chance. For a split second, I felt a twinge of something. Nostalgia? Pity? But then I remembered all the lies, all the broken promises, all the stress and pain he'd put me through. No, I said firmly. I'm done giving you chances, Jack. Please leave. I brushed past him and got into my car, my hands shaking as I started the engine. As I drove away, I saw him in my rearview mirror, standing there looking lost. But I didn't turn back. That was the last time I saw Jack in person. He tried calling a few more times, from different numbers, but I blocked them all. Eventually, the divorce was finalized without any further drama. And you know what? Life got better. A lot better. Without the constant stress of Jack's unemployment and spending, my own finances improved dramatically. 
I was able to pour all my energy into my cosmetology office, and it showed. My client list grew, word of mouth spread, and soon I was busier than I'd ever been. I made the decision to leave my part-time job at the clinic and focus solely on my own business. It was scary at first, but it turned out to be the best decision I could have made. With the extra time and energy, I was able to really focus on marketing and expanding my services. I hired two more cosmetologists to help with the increased workload, and suddenly, I wasn't just a cosmetologist, I was a boss. The loan I'd taken out to start the business? Paid off, ahead of schedule. The constant worry about making ends meet? Gone. For the first time in years, I felt financially secure. But it wasn't just about the money. I started allowing myself little luxuries, weekend trips, nice dinners out, those shoes I'd been eyeing for months. Things I'd always denied myself before, thinking we needed to save every penny for some nebulous future that never seemed to arrive. Now, as I sit in my expanded office, looking at the plans for our new treatment room, I can't help but marvel at how much has changed. I'm not just surviving anymore, I'm thriving. And I did it all on my own. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't always easy. There were nights when I missed having someone to come home to, someone to share my successes with. But those moments became fewer and farther between as I built a life I truly loved. Looking back, I realized that ending my marriage to Jack wasn't the end of my story, it was the beginning. It was the moment I chose myself, my dreams, my future. And you know what? I'd make that choice again in a heartbeat.